Don't blame me for this, it's cold and I'm depressed. Are you ready? <laughs> Chris Johnny X and welcome to this video. I know that I'm in a bit of a bind here, but I'm just, it's cold. I, I'm depressed. I want to take a nap. I'm just tired and all that. So I'm doing this from my bed. I hope you understand. Anyway, 2017 was an amazing year for video games. However, I didn't get a chance to play them all, whether it be due to not have the right console or just because of the fact that I didn't have the funds to buy them. I'm poor after all, like, I'm, this YouTube doesn't even take off yet. However, there were quite a few games that I did play, regardless of whether they came out this year or not, that I feel are worth checking out. So, this is my list, my top 10 list of games that I played in 2017. The only rule that I can think of, anyway, is that no matter what year it was released in, I had to have played it for the first time in 2017. At any point in 2017, it can do, so long as I manage to make also good progress in the game. Anyway, let's get to it. This is top... I already said that thing. Number 10. Sonic Forces. This one, I hate to admit, is not as good as I hoped it to be, but it is alright either way. I'll get to that more when I do a review on it. And I do mean when. The character customization, of course, is a hell of a lot of fun. The gameplay from Generations is as good as ever. For the most part, anyway. And as usual, the music is fucking phenomenal! It's only a number 10, though, because, again, it's not as good as I hoped it to be. You'll find out soon enough when I make a full review of it. Number 9. Ukulele. This game is definitely worth your time, in my honest opinion. It definitely feels like the old Banjo-Kazooie games and how they controlled, which is funny because that seems to be exactly why people don't like ukulele much. I mean, I don't see the hate being justified, especially since a lot of the game can be doable. Though in my case, at least, the minigames were not. So much so that I actually planned to do a review on just the minigames. Even got the footage stored on my external HDD. However, that video got cancelled when Playtonic Games went and put out a patch that fixed the game's problems, including and especially the minigames. They were a lot more doable for me, although I noticed that when trying to get the pages for the minigames that, despite them being beaten with the high score, I had to play them through again when, before the update, I didn't have to do so in term since I already retained the high score. I don't remember, however, if I beat my own high score though, so take that for what you will. Number 8. Klonoa, the Wii Remake. Honestly, this game was so fun that I did a review on it earlier this year. Or last year, I should say. However, as fun as it was, I didn't have the time to record all the footage for the game, so I went and asked people to play it for themselves. However, if you guys want me to do a part 2 to discuss the rest of the game, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to find time to record, no worries. Anyway, this game is just so much fun, it's so freaking adorable, it can get hard, one of the power-ups are freaking useless, but this is a game I wish I had played much, much sooner. If you don't have a Wii or a Wii U to play this, the original PS1 version is on PS3 and is just as amazingly good. Aside from being unable to go back to past levels to save the people that you missed, anyway. Number 7. DOOM! To be honest, it was a bit of a toss-up between this and Doom 3 BFG Edition, but while Doom 3 was good for me as a horror game that I was actually willing to play, Doom 2016 was basically everything that made the original Doom great. Ripping and tearing, shooting demons, collecting little guys, and just having an amazing experience that can also be a good anger venter of sorts. Oh, let's not forget the glory heals. So fucking good. Number 6. Deadpool. As rough as it could get, this game was a hell of a lot of fun. It stayed true to the Deadpool character like the movie, and it was a ton of fun to play and experience. Only real gripe is that this game could be short. Gameplay and writing all make up for it though. Hell, I've debated over playing the game again for a review of sorts, and I don't mean just the quick bits one that I put out, but I've also noticed that they took down the digital version and DLC for the games. Again. Activision, you really need to get a better hold on these licenses, damn it. Seriously. Other than that, it's fun being able to play as the Greatest Deathstroke parody. What? I I'm serious, it's a Deathstroke parody. Look it up. Just like Lobo's parody Wolverine, Deadpool's parody Deathstroke. Look it up. It's on the internet. 
I'm sure it's actually common knowledge, but not to casuals, I guess. Number 5. Metroid Samus Returns. Seems Nintendo finally listened to us. Well, aside from the cease and desists on fan works and videos, but other than that, they finally gave us a true original Metroid game. Yeah, it's just a remake of Metroid 2 and not something like Metroid Dread, but it doesn't diminish its value any bit. My only real gripe is moving with the circle pad and not the D-pad, but even I eventually got used to that. I'm honestly so glad I got to play this and it's definitely a game worth checking out. Especially, ESPECIALLY for the post-credits ending and the secret shows of lore picks. Number 4. Super Mario Odyssey. Man, Nintendo really hit one out of the park with this. After Mario 3D World, Nintendo wanted to make a return to the old style of their 3D platformers such as 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy 1 and 2. And that they did. Mario Odyssey is definitely worth checking out for the gameplay and the fact that you can become other enemies. Messed up, but still cool. I only put it at number 4 though because of two reasons. The rolling, and some loop-de-loop -loop platforms. They were blatantly stolen from Sonic and no one gives a fucking shit! Fucking hypocrites, you cry foul when Sonic had powers from aliens and called it a ripoff of Mario Galaxy, and then you did it again with Lost World! That 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 game sucks, but still. Number 3. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. This game is amazing! Everything that is Zelda has been completely revamped for this game. A massive overworld to explore, a revamped stamina system, making and eating food for health and stat benefits, jumping without the use of an item. It's all just so amazing. There's also voice acting in it, and it's actually good. Great even. Never expected Zelda to be British, though. Nothing wrong with that anyway. Only real gripes are that the weapon system has everything break, including the Master Sword, although it does come back eventually, like 10 minute time limit, I think. No real dungeons aside from the Divine Beasts, and I've encountered a number of framerate drops, and even full-blown freezes which surprisingly didn't result in crashes. Still think this game's worth checking out though. Big warning though, this game's real hard! Now that I'm sure you're wondering, if not Odyssey, your Breath of Wild and number 2 and 1 respectively, then what are number 2 and number 1? Maybe you should stop asking questions so we can finish watching the final- Number 2. Sonic Mania! Well, we finally got it. While not a good modern Sonic game, it's a good, nay, AMAZING Sonic game. Classic Sonic gameplay at its finest, level design that just feels right, special stages that can be fun, not counting the bullshit blue sphere spade stages, and the inclusion of a brand new mechanic in the drop dash. I was so hyped for this game that not only did I pre-order the collector's edition, worth it, but I also made an entire month of reviews dedicated to Sonic games in Sonic Month. And thank god the game didn't suck or the month would have been ruined. Game can be hard, but it's worth it. It truly is. However, I am not gonna try and go for the medals with the blue sphere stages, even for the bonus stuff to be used in no safe slot. I'm sorry, I just can't handle that stress and butt clenching. Still an amazing game, even if it is a tie-in to Sonic Forces. In fact, this game is actually the highest rated Sonic game in 15 years, even more so than Generations. I feel like that's actually kind of depressing. Now you're probably wondering, if that's Sonic Mania at number one, what is number one? What the fuck did I just say? Before I get to number one though, I want to go over a few honorable mentions that I have written down here at the very least. <coughs> There's Metal Gear Rise and Revengeance. I couldn't find a place for this list, although I will be covering it in a review real soon. Crash Bandicoot and Insane Trilogy, which I couldn't put on the list because the game I just got it just shy of 2018 and didn't have the time to play through enough of the other two games, let alone those two games at all. I've only played a bit of the Crash Bandicoot first one, and I already had encountered a glitch in it, which is definitely a problem. Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy on PS3. I'm taking my time with this one, it's still a lot of fun, but I really need to search online for help more often than not. Ratchet and Clank the 2016 Remake. The movie is just awful, but the game is a hell of a lot of fun, man. Just as the series has always been. Glad I went through trying to 100% it to the best of my ability, too. There's also God of War Ascension. Such a fun game, but... Damn, it gets gory! Even more gory than freaking Doom, and that is a gory game. Like, holy shit. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. I am nowhere near done with this game, in all honesty. So I felt it couldn't be put on the list. Trust me, though, it's good. The opening actually made me cry as well, in all seriousness. I... I think I really should play more of that game, actually. Strider 2014. Hell of a lot of fun, but I don't know how far I am in it that I could have put it on the list. It's hard, though. It can get hard. Trust me. Castlevania Lords of Shadow. 
Or is the Lord of, or is the Lord of Shadows? I don't know which anymore. Didn't play enough of it again to put it on the list, but it's done all right so far. I, I'm not really seeing the hate that it got so far. Uh, Pokemon Ultra Moon. It's fun, it's Pokemon, but... I don't know, I felt a bit underwhelmed even after beating it. It was a lot of fun. Like, there were some things that did surprise me, like the stuff in the Crosma and finding out how to get the Ultra Beast. I actually managed to encounter one entirely on accident. I was amazed that it was that. I thought it was like a special legendary or something like that. I, for some reason, thought it was Deancey when it was... I, I want to say Feromosa was her name. And it seems that that is about it. Oh, forgot to mention for Ultra Moon. Ultra Warp Ride can be repetitive as fuck and can be really ruined, honestly. So, let's get to number one, shall we? And the number one game I played in 2017 is... Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. This game is just amazingly fun and got immensely addicting to me. It's funny because I turned it on to play once and then didn't touch it again for a couple of months. When I did, however, I literally couldn't stop. This fun little Metroid style game with enough content to keep you busy for a while. It's so much fun to beat up the bad guys here, and it might be because I'm a big wrestling fan. Although I know what you're asking. Why Guacamelee? I mean, Breath of the Wild, Odyssey, and even Sonic Mania? Nitro's Guacamelee? Why? Well, this game was so good that I actually went and platinumed the game. That's right, I did something I normally wouldn't do and initially planned to do for ukulele, that I went and got the platinum trophy of the game. And yes, it is so immensely satisfying to have one. And there you have it, my top 10 games I played in 2017. I hope you enjoyed this list, and I need to go back to being depressed and try to work on the next 50th review special. It's gonna be a long one, I'm sure. And I don't mean just in terms of how long it could take, I mean it's probably gonna be a very long video. I got a lot to say about Arkham Knight. Look forward to that. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button to show your support, and you can subscribe for more. Click any of the cards and such to check out the videos there and whatnot. You can also check out my social medias in the description below, and please remember to stay awesome. Bye bye